Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. Welcome to How We Grow, the vacation rental show. I'm Linnell Gordon, and today we have a very, very special guest with us. I'm very excited to have Claire Rice with us. I love her. She's with Sand and Sea, Galveston Island in Texas. And let me tell you a little bit about Claire before we get started. Um, well, first of all, I'll say that I am in Bologna, Italy. So I'm really excited that we're able to do this podcast no matter where I am. And, and I'm really, that just makes my, my day to be able to do that from wherever I am. Um, but Claire is in Galveston Island, Texas, and Claire has um, gotten some really cool awards. Uh, she recently got uh, in Galveston County, one of 10 women of, women of influence in the county, and she is the only one in hospitality. She's also gotten tourism partner of the year, like in 2022. She's worked for her company uh, for 20 years, but her company's uh, called Sand and Sea, and they are having their 50 year anniversary soon. So you're having fourth generation guests come and hang with you. Claire, thank you for being with us. I'm really happy. Thank you for the invitation, Lanelle. So what we do here is we talk about things that will help other property managers to grow. And I always ask uh, stories. I ask for a story about a homeowner and a story about a guest to start with. Uh, and they don't have to be anything other than interesting to you. So tell me, Tell me a couple of stories for us to get started here. When I was thinking about talking to you on this podcast, the first word that came to mind was relationships. And both of my stories, both homeowners and guests have to do with relationships. The first is, is we're about to celebrate our founder, our company founder's birthday. Our company founder is my mother, she, Bert mm -hmm. Feynman. She is about to, who received a, a an award from Amy Highnote, uh, Pioneer Women in Vacation Rentals. And oh, um, we're uh, she's about to celebrate her 90th birthday. And when we were going over the guest list, four of the invites are going to couples who have been with Sand and Sea, they're homeowners of ours, who've been with Sand and Sea for 30 years or more. That's remarkable. That it, is a it, remarkable story. And it speaks to relationship. No question about it. Yeah. Long time to have a homeowner. Oh, it's a long time to have a homeowner because homeowners come and go, you know, mm -hmm. life circumstances change, they sell it, they buy it, their kids want to use it, you know, they want to use it more, just all sorts of things change. But we have some homeowners that have stayed with us for a very long time. They love our beach houses and we love them. Mm -hmm. um, th the other thing that comes to mind when I think about our guest is, is one of the things that we love at Sand and Sea, and we have some longtime employees, we love that we know the names of our long-term guests, and we're now seeing fourth generation guests. And so we'll get emails from somebody saying, Amazing. my grandmother used to make the reservations for us every summer, then my mother was making them, now it's my turn to make the reservations and I'm bringing my own children to make memories at the beach. So that's pretty great. You know, we, we have a, because we that gives me so chills, you know, that, I mean, <laughs> I just get chills when you say that, because that's, that's an amazing thing. Not just that you have an area that is so beautiful, that people would come for that many generations, but the fact that you've been able to maintain relationships yeah, with that yeah, length yeah. of time. And part of that, I'm going to go ahead and thank our marketing department for because we stay in touch with our guests and we make sure that we have very targeted marketing for our guests. Our email list is, um, I'll say thank you to the late Kelly Hurley from Visual Data oh, Systems. She was Kelly. the first was one back in 2006 and said, your guest list is everything. Your data is everything. And we're gonna start collecting data because I'm gonna help you build up your list. And that 
guest list is gold to us. It was gold through the pandemic because we could reach our guests directly and talk about what we were doing. There was already trust, but we still had to communicate with them about what was going on during the pandemic. We had record years in 2020, 2021, and 2022. All of them were strong. And I think a lot of them, thank you, is a lot of hard work from a lot of terrific staff. But uh, a lot of it is, is we've earned people's trust, but we keep earning it every day and we communicate. So the people out there that are using third parties, uh, OTAs and things like that, uh, specifically things like Airbnb, where they don't get to collect their own email address, Mm -hmm. what would you say to them? Find ways to do it. Even if you have to put a card in the property and say, welcome, I'd like to be able to communicate with you. We hope you're having a great time or we'll have a great time. Collect. All you have to do is is collect their, their name and their email, preferably their city, you know, and their address is good to have too, but find ways to communicate with them directly. We just went on to VRBO last year for the first time ever. And our by then it was 48 years. And the reason we did is, is the new homeowners interviewing us felt it was important to be on. So we went on, but still 92% of our bookings are direct booking. That you know, is, it's, that is, again, that's remarkable. That's a it, lot it, of direct bookings, guys. If you're listening, yeah, Claire, yeah. Claire is here to tell you how to do this. <laughs> well, we no, for real. So far. We've worked really hard at it, but if you look at VRBO and you go to Galveston, we have over 4,000 registered rentals, vacation rentals on Galveston Island. That's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. How are they going to find you on VRBO? Even if you are have the best ratings and you're changing your pictures out every day, all those things they tell you to do, it's still not easy to find you. So I think it's incumbent upon us as the business owners to find our guests and to keep in contact with the guests who have already found us. There is another, another suggestion I have too for you. If you mm-hmm. want to get the email address and uh, you're not doing that direct communication, it's going to VRBO, um, just ask for it. You know, you can ask mm-hmm. for their email address through through the VB, you know through VRBO, or when you send out your communication to them, uh, you know, say please email me or please give me your email address. Any way that you can, there are ways to do it. There are ways that we do it. Like uh, mm-hmm. some people have them sign addendums for the area, and then they need the email address for that. Just however you can do that, but absolutely, a lot. it's critical. Four thousand is a lot. Because if you ever decide to leave Airbnb or VRBO or Booking.com or any of the OTAs, you still have to have a way to run your business. You have to find those guests you have already hosted. You have to be able to find them. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and leave yourself vulnerable to losing that guest and that information forever. You know, another thing that that we... Oh, sorry. Now, if you ever thought guests that, don't come back to the place, you are a living proof that they do come back if you treat we're them. Very, we're very lucky because Houston, uh, they're now saying there's 7 million people within three hours of us. So we're very, very lucky that we're a drive to drive destination. To. That's right. You know, the other thing we do that helps us collect information is that we and more information. We send out a guest survey after every stay. And in exchange for filling it out, we offer a free weekend to somebody to, you know, they're entered for a free weekend. And and we we really honor that. We we just got through awarding our free weekend for 2022. And it's just another way to engage your guests and get them. We also have a rewards program. I don't understand why people don't do more of this. We figured out how to do it with ICND and we have something called the Beach Club. You earn so many points for every night stay. We don't care how expensive or how inexpensive a property is. It's a per night award. And after you stay X amount of nights, you get two free nights. That's really popular too. And it's another way to stay in touch with your most loyal guests. This episode of How We Grow is brought to you by Blue Tent. Blue Tent is proud to offer digital marketing solutions for vacation rental professionals. 
Expand your visibility to new travelers and book more guests with the team of Bluetent. Featuring direct booking sites, email marketing, digital marketing, channel management, and more. Discover what Bluetent can do for your short term rentals at bluetent.com. That's a great idea. That mm -hmm. is a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me about uh, you. Tell me about a little bit about yourself. Let's talk about what you do. You don't work with um, guests and you don't work with owners. Tell me what you do. You are complete operations. You run the company. Yes. Well, I'm a co-owner with my sister, Anne, and my mother, and my mother is retired. Um, Anne runs the day-to-day -day operations, and then until last year, I was running marketing, technology, and finance, and what happened was, is I decided I wanted to step away from the marketing and the technology, so I brought on people, we retooled a bit, and we brought on some assistance. And now what I'm focusing on is um, finance and legal. And I have uh, ramped up my community work. The other thing I've done all along is community work. When I first started in 2004, my mother said to me, when I first started at Sand and Sea, and I was coming from another career and coming back to the island, she said to me, make sure that the city knows we're out here. Make sure they know that we're out here on the West End, that vacation rentals exist, that we're paying our lodging tax, and that we are a participant in the hospitality industry. Because back then there were several hundred vacation rentals and that was it on the island. So it has grown exponentially. And um, I have remained involved in the community, building and maintaining relationships really for 20 years now. And I will say that the key to success in a community is relationships. I don't really know how people do this from afar, Linnell, because for me, it's showing up to an event. It's showing up and being part of a board, like I'm on the board of the Galveston, Galveston Hotel and Lodging Association. Um, which is on the national level, not really friendly to vacation rentals, but on the local level, people said to me, we've got to have vacation rentals represented on this board. And that was because I was already involved in other pieces of hospitality on the island. So I broke into that organization that way. But it is, um, it is so important to the relationships that are face to face, that are where you either give time, money, participation, support, it's everything. Because if people are upset about vacation rentals, they're looking at me, it's me they're upset with. You know, it's not some stranger they don't know. They'll come to me and say, what do we do about this? We're having this issue in our neighborhood. Claire, what do you suggest here? That's all because of relationships. So let me ask you this. If mm -hmm. you had one piece of advice that you could give, uh, now tell me what, wait a minute. Well, I'm going to ask you what piece of advice you're going to give to property managers who want to grow. That's the question. But I want you also, will you mention what you and Sue talked about that we were talking earlier about VRMA? And let's talk about why that's so important as well. So one piece of advice that I have for um, for vacation rental property managers, doesn't matter what size you are, I'm going to say it's VRMA. Um, my mother always said she was one of the earliest members of Irma back in the 80s. She joined, she saw a little ad in a real estate. She talks about it being a really small ad in, in a real estate magazine and she called, she joined. We've been members ever since. I just got through renewing. She says it was VRMA who taught her how to make money. She knew the vacation rentals were a good way to make money, but they, the, the people there taught her how to make money. And it continues to this day. When I have an issue, 
I will call somebody I've met through Verma. And let me back up a minute. Verma is relationships. Sure, you can go to seminars. Absolutely. Sure, you can participate in a committee. But in the end, when you go to those conferences, it's the people you meet and you trade cards. And when somebody's in a different part of the country, I am happy to help. If they call me and say, do you have a form for so-and-so? Of course I do. Let me send you what we have. And we'll even find our our. our our uh, publisher version or our Word document. I never send PDFs, that's just mean, you know? So they can adopt it and use it as they as they want to um, and adapt it as they see fit. So I think that Verma is incredibly important. I will tell you at the last conference, I spent more time out in the halls and on in chairs and meeting with people one-on-one, two-on-one than in the seminars. It's so important. It is so important. It can mean everything to your business because not only are you exposed to how people are doing it, but they inspire as well as show you how to do it. People are incredibly generous if you're not down the street and you're not a direct competitor. <laughs> no, I agree. They are. And Guys, if you if you're listening, you know that that's the one piece of advice. That's the one piece of advice that every single person that comes on here says is you have to find mentors or people that are doing the same job as you are and learn from them. You learn from each other. That's what this whole program is about. Learning from other people that do property management and and how not to make a mistake. Okay, so Claire, go back 20 years. What's the one thing you would tell your and we're we're whistling a little bit. Turn our volume down. The volume that maybe my volume to you. Um, I think yeah. So if you were to go back to yourself twenty years ago, what's the one piece of advice you'd give yourself and say? Oh, now it's hard for me to hear you. Sorry, I've got construction oh. outside. Is that what you're hearing? Mm, I thought it was buzzing, so I could be wrong. So okay, keep going. I can hear right. you now. Okay. What's the one piece of advice you go back 20 years? What's the one piece of advice you give yourself and say, oh, Claire, don't, or oh, Claire, do? You're going to say I'm repeating it's myself. Business. It's, it's, it's relationships. It's, okay. it's I, when my mother told me 20 years ago, make sure that they know we're out here. I said, where do I start? And she said, here's where you start with Jerry Moan. He's the president of the West Galveston Island Property Owners Associations. It was an umbrella organization of 40 subdivisions, all of which wow. Sand and Sea have properties in. She said, he's the first place to start with. Jerry and his wife, Winky, is that so Texas? Jerry and Winky still are friends to this day. We still collaborate. We still talk. He's the one who helped me formulate the idea to start our GARM organization, Galveston Association of Vacation Rental Managers, which was our proactive answer 20 years ago to the prospect of rental regulations. That's amazing. Yeah. So That's again, amazing. it's relationships. It's you can't you can't make your presence known without getting involved. You have to get involved. That's how you make your presence known. And I, you know, it's everything. I look at this little list. It's everything. Chamber was one of the first places I went. I spent seven years on that board and working on the, the chamber, the tourism board, your real estate board, uh, your churches and synagogues, your civic organizations, your HOAs and your neighborhood groups. The other one that we participate with is our environmental and tourism organizations. You know, there, there are so many ways to get involved and to get your name out there. Oh, yeah. and donate stays. Donate stays in your properties when there's a birding festival. It doesn't have to be hard, cold cash. It might be in your pre-arrival guest email that you're promoting the events that are coming up in Galveston. There's all kinds of ways to support your community efforts that are going on to become part of your community. Well, I really appreciate you talking with me. I do want to say something before I go, because this was something interesting that was unearthed. I've known you many years, but one of the things that, uh, that was unearthed that was sent to me was that you used to produce television documentaries about mm -hmm. child abuse, mm -hmm. drug addiction and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say, 
uh, kudos to all that you do for your community and for people in general. You are just an incredible human being, Claire. You really are. And the fact that all you've done when I said to you, Claire, will you come talk to people that are uh, in property management and help them grow their business? You're like, sure, absolutely. And it's all about relationship. And I just want to say you're remarkable. Would you mind if someone's out there and they're like, I just want to connect with someone I'm you or I'm interested in something that you said, can they contact you, Claire? Absolutely. And I'll just say it right now. It's Claire at sandandc.com. It's C L. A-I-R-E at S-A-N-D-N as in Nancy, S-E-A dot com. The best way to reach me is email me first and just put need to talk and then we'll decide on a time that's great. I don't really answer my phone these days when I don't know who's calling. So please <laughs> just write me ahead of time and, and I'll be happy to. And Today, just like five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I'm just as willing to share information. As long as you're not a direct competitor, I share information. Well, I want to tell you, I'm grateful for you to come talk with us and your love and caring of this industry is, it's apparent, it's always been apparent. And thank you so much, Claire, for coming to talk. To me. And I will say hey, thank you, Linnell, and thank you for everything you do for this industry. Mm -hmm. You are also one of the first people I met in this industry. And you <laughs> helped me through a lot of technological issues. You tried to help me understand what was going on with software or integrations of different softwares. And you've been invaluable to me uh, for that. Oh. I used to call you and just say, how does this work? <laughs> so you also are a fabulous <laughs> resource. Don't, oh. don't underestimate how much. Well, I really do appreciate that. And, and you've superseded and your, your tech stack is phenomenal. Guys, you should ask her about her tech stack. Claire is one who questions everything and she does understand exactly what's happening on her back end. So if you have questions about that too, she's a wonderful resource. Um, she knows everybody in the industry and she can help you find it. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, Linnell. This episode of How We Grow was brought to you by Blue Tent Marketing. To find out more about how Blue Tent Marketing can help grow your vacation rental business, visit bluetent.com. Make sure to search for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found, and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening.